thanks, guys. So it's uh, me, Ivan Brezo Birkan, and uh, my dear colleague, Tena Shoe from uh, Netokratia. First of all, who of you here read Netokratia regularly? So, okay. I'll find the rest of you later on. Um, anyway, so for those of you who don't know, Netokratia is um, John Biggs, cover your ears, I don't see him actually here. Um, it's the tech crunch of Southeastern Europe. So we write about technology and uh, the startup businesses in this region with a special emphasis on Croatia, Serbia, and Slovenia where we have uh, a local edition. So if you have a startup, if you have a technology business, you pitch to us, then these guys uh, read about it after they uh, do the whole Google Translate thing, right? Um, so uh, we're actually going to present, um, actually, I didn't skip that slide, okay. We're going to present, um, in short, uh, the results um, um, of some research we did on how much was invested in Croatian startups uh, in 2014, the structure of it, why it's important, and basically what you guys need to know if you're looking for funding. So what's going on in the uh, ecosystem. The authors uh, of this research are, of course, uh, Tena Schoer, uh, our colleague Marko Mudrić, the editor of Netokracija Serbia, and um, myself. Uh, the research was started by Netokracija and supported by all these wonderful, wonderful brands, including Start Labs, a venture fund from Belgrade uh, you might want to talk to when they're in Zagreb. Um, so, first of all, the thing is that um, up until this point, there has never been really conclusive research on what's going on in the startup ecosystem. Um, so for those of you who don't know, the actual, the first conference that focused on startups at all was in 2009, it was called Webstart, and at that point, basically no one cared about technology startups. There was not a lot of interest, and from that point on, to today, we have a number of companies. So we have startups like Farmeron, like Rima Santobili, obviously, like Bellaby, Ted the Guardian. So a lot of companies have um, been started in that period thanks to the efforts of local investors, thanks to the efforts, obviously, of local partners. Um, and Netokratia has been following that for this, uh, this time frame. Now, at the very beginning, you had, um, like this event, for example, you had uh, a fund, I know, I'm guessing most of you are familiar with Seedcamp. So it's a UK-based uh, startup accelerator. Uh, when Seedcamp came to uh, Croatia for the first time, I can't, I think it was 2010, some of you might uh, be able to, 2009? First time, okay. Um, so when Seedcamp came for the first time, again, the event was actually huge for the community because before that, no startup investor came to Croatia and said, look, we want to freaking invest in, in technology companies here that are going to not just outsource their services, but they're going to build sustainable businesses, grow fast. At that point, it sounded like a dream, right? It's, it's like, oh, cool, companies that are growing and employing a lot more people, scaling their technology, scaling their businesses. Um, and it was. And those first investments from Seedcamp, which, which were like 50K, so not, not a lot of money, but for that time it was like, whoa, someone's investing in a Croatian company. Jesus Christ, why is that? Um, it was actually huge for the community, huge moral uh, boost. The good news is that um, 2014 compared to 2014 um, actually shows 10 times um, the investments just in terms of the whole freaking package, right? So in 2014, more than 20 million uh, were invested in uh, Croatian uh, startups. It's specifically 19 startups. We'll get into the details. But the thing is that unlike before when the, when the, the money was scarce and there was not a lot of interest, not a lot of investors maybe knew about Croatian startups, now the companies in the last year got um, very big investments, actually, right? Um, Tena will talk about why this time, time frame, like a number of years was important, because like when it started, again, 2009, 2010, these companies were just like starting out, right? So for example, I'm sure that a lot of you know about Repsley, right? So they, they do a, like a sales app. Um, Back then, at the time of the first seed camps and the first like startup events, 
um, they were called SalesBot, right? And I distinctly remember uh, sitting down with uh, Yure Mikush from RSG Capital uh, and Nereshma Sohoni from SeedCamp talking to SalesBot. And these two guys, unlike a lot of startups that presented, they knew their shit. Like, they, every question we asked, they were like, they really knew what they were doing. Um, and it was like, Jesus Christ, okay, these guys have the potential to A, grow, employ more people, sell this product, and also get an investment, because without an investment, they can't scale the product. That was 2009, 2010. Like, Repsley is now a reputable company, right, that is growing. So it takes time. So for any of you that have early stage businesses, don't expect um, to be like Nanobit or Rimas Automobili or even Repsley like in 2016, right? It's going to take a bit of time. So just be, um, just be a bit, um, uh, take the, the time in, uh, into account. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, the number is really great. It's really awesome that there are more investments coming, but what I think is more important is that actually in the previous years, we've had just this one big token investment. And the second biggest investment was multiple times smaller than the biggest investment, which means there was just this one mature product ready to scale, ready to use up that money to actually build the, the company. And then there was a wide array of companies which were early stage, just starting up, and uh, what will happen to them was really questionable. Uh, this year, actually, we have five bigger investments, which is really great, which means that the whole market is actually maturing. We have Rimas Automobili, Bella Beat Pharma, and Repsley, and Teddy the Guardian, which are all six, seven, eight-figure investments, and they're all going to conquer other markets. And what's also important, I think, is that all of these companies are two to five years old, or even more, which means that they're debunking a myth that's been going on in Croatia when the whole startup craze uh, actually started. Uh, Max actually mentioned recently that People in the CEE sometimes see startups as like a free level up. You know, the jobs are scarce and the pays are low and suddenly you're an entrepreneur and you get some kind of investment and it's awesome. Uh, but actually these companies are debunking that myth of some quick money and they're showing that it actually takes a lot of work and a hard work to actually get where they are. And I don't mean two or five years working on an idea and mulling it over, but two or five years actually working on your product and conquering the market. And the thing that you need to, to take in account with all these projects that are maturing is it, it really does uh, make a difference on what you're working on, right? So if we look at who got investments, um, the specific number of hardware startups dominates, right? So, Rian Sotobili, Bellabeat, Farmeron, Teddy Guardian, all hardware projects. Repsley, software company. So, the time of hardware projects has come, right? It's, it's basically, if you read Netocracia or you read TechCrunch or you read Mashable, uh, investors will be interested in the next big thing. The next big thing will be written on, like Mate mentioned, um, like smart cars, right? So, um, yesterday on Etocratia, we announced that um, on uh, May the 4th, we're going to have Uber for the first time in uh, Croatia. And um, what, we're expect, we're, what we're hoping they're, they're going to do officially, we'll see, but they're going to certainly confirm it, is that Uber, um, a ride, well, ride sharing, um, uh, car, sh car sharing company is coming to Zagreb. Now, this is big news because, of course, they're going to basically um, kick the ass of the local, local taxi companies, which are not really innovating. That's important because if you look at Uber, if you look what's going on, if you read, again, if you read Netocrats, if you read TechCrunch, you'll see what's going to happen, right? If you listen to Mati, he said, smart cars, right? The guy freaking, he, he maybe like shared 2% or 3% of what he knows here, so it's, it's just like small tidbits. So you, you, might be, you, you might consider working on smart car technology, something along those lines. Maybe go work for Matt uh, later on in two or three years, start your own company on, in that industry. Basically, look at the trends. If uh, we looked again to the, to, the, to the beginning like one or two years ago, and Teddy Guardian and Bella Beat, for example, were starting, it was like, okay, it's hardware. It's so... It's so um, expensive, it's, it's hard, how are you going to do it from Croatia? And that, in terms of things came, right? The trend came, investors were interested, 
and those guys could secure money. And the thing is that if you look at the, the right chart, um, the seven hardware projects account for more than 80% of all the investments in Croatian startups in 2014. So look at the trends, look what's going on, um, and it should make uh, raising money easier. Not just in terms that you need to start a company in a specific industry, but you just have to position yourself in a certain way, right? So Desert Guardian, the founders, worked on medical uh, software uh, before they worked on the hardware. And basically, like the, the, their target market still ended up being the same kind of company, and that's hospitals. The product shifted. And what it helped them is basically go to San Francisco, raise money, and grow their business. Uh, so we actually wanted to also have an overview of who is investing in Croatia and how much, because those are two important questions. Uh, so if we look at this graph, it's really colorful. There are investments from all over, and most of them are actually from Europe. Around 70% of the investments are actually from Europe, and that's according to the number of investments. Uh, if we take a look at actually the height or the amount of the money invested, this graph looks a lot differently. Actually, the whole of Europe, the whole 70% of this pie chart is actually accounts for only 4% of the total amount of investments. Uh, the, most of the investments uh, come from the States and China. And this actually, when we put it into context, paints a really nice picture of the European or actually Croatian startup life cycle. So basically what happens is that a startup starts locally, of course, and then they move to an accelerator, a local one, usually uh, mostly from Bulgaria, to get initial investment, the, the smaller rounds from 25 to 50,000 euros uh, to actually put their business on the, its feet. And uh, more importantly, to actually get some info about how to run a business, because we like to talk about how we have a lot of technical talent. However, when it comes to business skills, they are still a bit lacking. So actually our entrepreneurs who are usually newly minted, this is their first project, go to an accelerator and they, they get all the skills they need from how to sign a check to how to raise investment. So uh, what happens is they get these smaller initial seed investments, which are also smaller because they are aimed at early stage startups. And then they, when they're ready to scale, they actually go to bigger markets, to China, to USA, to also raise money. They need to scale more aggressively and to conquer a wider global markets. So that's a path uh, Southeast European startup goes through. And the thing is that while all of this is important, like each specific data set, each specific graph may not be relevant to you. But the thing is, uh, as you know, and I'm sure that we'll hear throughout the day, um, when you have a startup, you have to actually test, right? You have to prototype. You see, you have to actually uh, test if uh, a customer wants your product, if they're using it. You, you have to get data. This is data for startups, right? Now we know what can happen. It's not 2009, that's 2010, it's not 2011. Our startups, Croatian startups, have experience with US investors, UK investors, Eastern European investors. The data is here, the experience is here. If you want to raise money from London, New York, San Francisco, like Bucharest or Sofia, you have people that you can ask. You have the data to show who's investing, who's interested. No one can bullshit you anymore, right? That's important. So, of course, one of the aims of this report was to um, promote Croatian startups throughout the world. But the other aim is for you, the Croatian startups or potential Croatian startups, to know what you're getting into. Because later on, if you're raising money from someone, you can get this data and see what's actually, what actually happened and use that knowledge to hopefully be part of our report in 2000, for 2015, and good luck uh, with that. And you can download your copy at bit.ly, blah, 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 blah. And don't spam me, but you can. But download it. We need numbers, right? We like numbers. Thanks. Guys, thank you very much.